play a little what if to start the sportscast. South Florida lost to Houston Saturday. Imagine if the Aztecs had not lost to Fresno State and Boise State in those back-to-back -back weeks. The Aztecs would have, could have, should have been on schedule for a New Year's Day six bowl game. But those two losses back-to-back -back eliminate the scenario. Right now, it's the one-loss invite going to Notre Dame, who just moved past South Florida. It's all subject to change, of course. But with a New Year's Day bowl game out of the cards, a conference championship is still a possibility for SDSU. I think we've done a great job last week just preparing and just getting ready for the next opponent. So, I mean, I think we can do, just do that from here on out. We, get, we got to ride our own wave. That's what we call it. So, I mean, and that's something we have to develop. And I think we're getting the confidence back now. We're still thinking about win 22, so that's still not over yet. Every, after every break, we say win 22 because it's still a possibility. You know, I think if they just help us out, I mean, we can be back right where we left off last year. All right, the Prep Picks Report Game of the Week Committee has adjourned. Here are the Week 11 recommendations. The fun will all start from the Battle of the Surfboard at Torrey Pines. Rick Willis is at the Discovery Bowl. John Soderman's down in the South Bay. Matt Gilson will be at Christian. And Brandon Stone will be at University City for the Paredes City Game of the Week. The Nelson Photo Pickskin Idol Game goes to West Hills. And the small school game of the week goes to Kearney at Crawford. We also say four big games for the final four, including the Holy Bowl between St. Augustine at Cathedral. Of course, Monday nights means Shaq's pig pen. Here's the Week 10 inductee. We're at El Capitan High School this afternoon where longtime coach Ron Berner needs a couple of wins to ensure that they're in the playoffs. And one of the young men they're counting on is a six foot three, 235 pound defensive end by the name of Antonio Olivieri. He's just big and strong. I mean, he's tall, he's strong, he's, and he's relentless. He just, he's constantly, his motor's constantly going. Antonio is probably the most versatile athlete we've ever had in Shaq's pig pen. When he's not a defensive end or an outside linebacker, he's their starting quarterback. Well, I started out tight end at the beginning of this year and, um, and our quarterback went down, so I came in. Then he came back last week against Valhalla and he got hurt again, so I, I bounced back at quarterback this week. Just this year, he's played quarterback, he's played H-back, he's played tight end, he's played slot, he's played nasty slot, he's played linebacker, nose, and he's played uh, defensive tackle. I think it helps a lot because uh, I can be put anywhere. You know, I just love playing the game of football, you know, so I do whatever it takes for the team to win. Chip flip, 20 goal with two, ready? A lot of what he does is, is lead by example. He's not a yeller and a screamer, but in the classroom, he's a 4.2, 4.3 guy, gets his work done, um, works out at 5 o'clock in the morning before he comes to school. I mean, the things you just see that he does, if, if you had 50 kids doing that, you'd never lose a football game. Antonio, welcome to Shaq's Pig Pen for 2017, and here's a for you. Thanks, Coach. What do you say we go to the Barnes Tennis Center for the girls' open division championship between Torrey Pines and Canyon Crest? Ravens, Julia Heyer in the near court defeats the Falcons at Megan Tran 6-3. Heyer wins two of her three matches. Falcons, Lee and Hansen in the near court win all three of their matches. Torrey Pines wins 12-6. It's their 28th consecutive CIF girls' tennis title. Being captain is, um, it was really an honor because all these girls are amazing. They definitely made it easy on me. Yeah, we just take it match by match. We don't get too caught up in that. And then it just helps us get to number 28. Congratulations, ladies. Field hockey playoff, San Diego hosting Sage Creek. Summer Horton gets the scoring starter for Rick Wilson's alma mater. She would finish with two goals. Later, it's Maya Goldschmidt doing the honors. She also scores twice for the Mustangs, 4-0. Your final. Another one from the field hockey pitch. Hilltop and East Lake squaring off with less than nine minutes to play. The tri Tritons Taylor Trope hits a slap shot that finds the back of the goal for a 1 0 lead. Coach is happy about that. Two minutes later, the Titans Olivia Sakamoto gets the open, gets open in front of the net. She would score twice. The final, or excuse me, she would score the other goal. The Lady Titans improved to 15 0 on the season. The San Marcos Chick-fil-A hosting the ninth annual Discovery Bowl Challenge. Bowl, uh, both teams, uh, San Marcos and Mission Hills, uh, they play Friday night in the Discovery Bowl and both schools gathered in a spirited fundraiser. Portions uh, from the night, proceeds are, from the night are divided between the two schools to help out their various causes. We love coming to uh, show what we got. San Marcos has a little bit more student body than we do, but we give it to them every year. And it's just a fun way to kind of get to know each other better and just kind of show what the whole community of San Marcos is all about. Mission Hill. San Marcos High. Are you kidding me? San Marcos High. It's always been Mission. It's always been San Marcos High. 
Now the cow looks upset. Last week, the former endurance athlete Sean Welsh was in studio to relive that 20th anniversary to her infamous crawl, the 97 Ironman in Kono. Sean also was promoting her Freedom to Live nonprofit, which included a Monday golf tournament. Matt Gilson was there. The same Sean Welch who couldn't take another step at the 97 Ironman has devoted her life to helping those with spinal cord injuries take strides toward independence. My mom started in 1982. She was an RN nurse and saw a huge gap in the system where people would leave the hospital and um, she'd follow them home and saw that there was not a lot of success and the families had a lot of stress. So she said, you know, they need to learn how to become independent. There's two saints in the world. It's my wife and her mother. Um, it's a foundation they built a long, long time ago, and it's purely from the heart, and it's to help other people. At Monday's golf tournament, Sean and former golf pro John Schroeder are teaming up to raise money for her nonprofit, Freedom to Live. It started when they started to help my daughter, Patty, who had her accident in 1996, and they've been unbelievably helpful to our family and my daughter in moving forward with their life. If you want living proof of how Freedom to Live can change lives, just ask Adam Hancock. I was studying to be an actor. It was a scene study class. There was a handgun being used as a prop, and uh, it was supposed to be empty, but a bullet got left in the chamber, and I got shot by accident. It's made all the difference in the world. Um, it's like you can make efforts. Um, you can get little pieces of the skill set here and there. It's sharing that knowledge, networking the resources. Um, th those things make a really big difference for other people because you see them just as lost as you were, and you can help them find their way. From Fairbanks Ranch, Matt Gilson, KUSI Sports.